can use the star Polaris to quickly and easily calculate our latitude at night. You may think that the North Star, or Polaris, sits right over the North Pole. Uh, and you're mostly right, but it's actually off by just a little bit. On the order of about a degree, it's off. And so as the Earth rotates kind of underneath that, uh, that star, there's a very small little radius that we need to correct for when we're doing our Polaris sights. Polaris is best found by using the constellation the Big Dipper, or Ursa Major, or the constellation Cassiopeia. Either one will point you directly to Polaris. Once you've found Polaris, you can take a measurement with the sextant, and then we can quickly calculate its latitude using the nautical almanac. Now to solve these problems, we're gonna to need to use the nautical almanac, and particularly in the back, we're gonna to need to use the Polaris tables. Polaris tables from 1981 for determining latitude from sextant altitude and azimuth. And looking at this table, we can see that we need the LHA of Aries, we need our approximate dead reckoning latitude, and we need the month that we're observing the site in. And once we have those pieces of information, down here at the bottom of the page, it gives a formula. It says your latitude is equal to your apparent altitude corrected for refraction. So that is our sextant observation corrected for uh, height of eye, index error, and the star correction minus one degree, plus these three corrections, A0, A1, and A2. A0, A1, and A2. So if we can simply get the LHA of Aries, uh, we can use this table and rapidly get our latitude. When we talk about Aries in the Nautical Almanac, we're actually talking about the first point of Aries. Aries is a constellation right near the celestial equator. So you can think of it as the prime meridian of the sky. It's like the Greenwich of the night sky. And we use the first point of Aries as a marker to help solve other navigational problems. We previously learned that the sun, or for our intents and purposes, any celestial body, if you were to drop a line down from it, it would impact the earth. And we called that declination because it was measured north or south of the equator. Well, it turns out that you can also measure that spot in terms of longitude. So if this is the prime meridian, the distance west and always west of that spot uh, also defines that spot and it is called the Greenwich Hour Angle. It's mostly referred to as an angle because we think about it up here. So from the prime meridian to the spot on the earth directly beneath the sun or any celestial object, uh, you can measure the longitude of that spot and call it Greenwich Hour Angle. Now if we wanted to relate that spot beneath the object, Greenwich, or the prime meridian, and our longitude on our ship, well, our longitude is just defined as longitude. We previously said that this distance was Greenwich our angle, and there's a third relationship that we can make. This angle right here, the remainder, GHA minus longitude is called local hour angle. And we're going to need that when we go in to solve our Polaris problems. Right? And it's just important to note that local hour angle uh, in the Western Hemisphere is defined as Greenwich hour angle minus longitude. In the Eastern Hemisphere, LHA is equal to Greenwich hour angle plus your longitude. All right, so if our ship was over here in the Eastern Hemisphere, LHA would be Greenwich hour angle plus our longitude. When we solve for Polaris latitude, we're interested in the LHA of Aries. So our first step is going to become to get the GHA of Aries. And then the second step is to get the LHA of Aries. And the third step is to solve for latitude. That's our general principles. Now the other thing that we need to know about the Nautical Almanac is that in the Nautical Almanac the GHA of Aries is listed for every hour, right? So if we were looking for the GHA of Aries at 0 hundred on the 4th of February, it would be 134 degrees, 04.2 minutes. Unfortunately, it's rare that we get exact hours of GHA, so we would need to interpolate between these two. In order to do that, we would uh, write down the base GHA for Aries, 
and then use the increments and corrections pages in the back of the nautical almanac for say 36 minutes and 10 seconds. And then there's an Aries column there. We need to add a correction of nine degrees, 0, 4.0 minutes. Finally, regarding the nautical almanac, the other change we need to make for Polaris is in the front of the book. Instead of using the apparent altitude corrections for the sun, we just need to make the apparent altitude correction for the stars and planets column. So in this case, for Polaris, we would use the star and planets column as part of our initial corrections. We're still gonna use the height of eye correction, still gonna use the index error correction, but instead of going over here like we do for the sun, we'll need to be over here for the stars and planets. Let's do an example that'll help this make a little bit more sense. In this case, we're on 15th of March, 1981. It's 0445 GMT, and our DR position is as listed. We observe the star Polaris at 29 degrees, 53.5 in our sextant. Now that's our sextant height. It's not yet been corrected. So in this case, we're gonna to need to apply our index correction, our height of eye correction, and then our apparent altitude correction. The first thing we'll need to take a look at is the height of eye correction. And in this case, our height of eye is 24 feet above the surface of the sea. So we look under the dip tables in the front of the nautical almanac until we come to a value that's close to 24 feet. And it looks here like our correction is negative 4.8 minutes of arc. Next is our index error. It's given to us as a plus 1.3 correction. So we'll add those two together and then that gives us our apparent altitude, our height apparent of 29 degrees and 50 minutes. The last preliminary step is again to use the nautical almanac and apply the main correction. In this case, previously we've used the sun corrections, but here we're gonna to need to use the star and planets correction since we're using uh, the star Polaris. And given an apparent altitude of 29 degrees and 50 minutes, if we come down the main correction table, to the closest value, it looks like our correction will be negative 1.7 minutes. And so doing that math, we get a total height observed, or HO, of 29 degrees and 48 decimal three minutes. We're gonna use that value to go into the Polaris tables next. So the next thing we have to do is go into the Polaris tables, and if you ever forget what you need to do, uh, the table will tell you you need the LHA of Aries in order to successfully complete this calculation. So let's find the LHA of Aries. And in order to do that, we need to first find the GHA of Aries for the day in question. So if it's 15 March, we can go into the Nautical Almanac and find the GHA of Aries for 15 March uh, for the whole hour of 0, uh, 400, so 232, 40.4, but then we need to account for the remaining 45 minutes. And we could maybe mentally interpolate that, but we're gonna skip that. So first thing we'll do is uh, we'll write down the GHA of Aries for 0, 0,400, the whole value. And that was 232 and 40.4 minutes, right from the Nautical Almanac. So, if we don't have the value for 0445 in here, what we need to do is use the increments and corrections pages back in the Nautical Almanac. And we go to the page for 45 minutes, 45 minutes, and then we use the Aries column. 45 minutes and zero seconds yields a correction of 11 degrees, 16.8 more minutes that we need to add to it. So for the GHA of Aries increment, that's that extra 45 minutes. The value from the back of the nautical almanac was 11 degrees, 16.8 minutes. So the total GHA would just be the addition of these two. That comes out to 243 degrees and 57.2 minutes. So that's the total GHA of Aries. Remember that we said we need the LHA of Aries and the LHA of Aries is in the Western hemisphere LHA is equal to GHA minus longitude. So we have the GHA, next we need to subtract our dead reckoning longitude. So we'll subtract um, 154 degrees and 30 minutes. That would give us an LHA of Aries of uh, 89 degrees and 27.2 minutes. So now that we have the LHA of Aries, we can use the Polaris tables in the back of the nautical almanac. So we'll enter the Polaris tables with our observed altitude with the LHA of Aries and we'll apply those corrections. So just as a refresher, 
in the Polaris tables, it says latitude is apparent altitude, which is our observed altitude, uh, corrected for a fraction, minus one degree plus these three corrections that we need to make. So we'll just make ourselves a little formula sheet here. So we need our height observed, uh, minus one degree plus a zero plus a one plus a two will give us our latitude. So our height observed was this value here. We'll just transcribe that up there. It's 29 degrees, 48.3 minutes. Minus one degree is 28 degrees, 48.3. And then these three corrections, what we need to do next is uh, look in the Polaris tables for the LHA of Aries, 89 degrees, 27.2. So we'll say it's about 89 and a half degrees. And the way we use the Polaris tables is uh, here's 80 to 89. And over here on the left, you can see 89 and 90, the difference there. So we need to go about halfway between 31.4 and 32.1 because we're about halfway between 89 and 90. So that correction would be uh, plus 31.7 minutes. The A1 and A2 corrections are just done from the same column. So we'll come on down there. Our DR latitude was 29 degrees and 10 minutes, so about 30. So that A1 correction should be about 0.5. And the A2 correction is just given by the month. And our problem says that we're in uh, March. So it would be a plus 0.8 correction. So with those two corrections, we've got a plus 0 0.5 minutes and a plus uh, 0 0.8 minutes. So that gives us a total latitude when we do this math out of 29 degrees, 21.3 minutes north.